How are we doing? Fox back again. Welcome back to the channel. This is just a quick intro to obviously the video that uh, you've clicked on this for, just to let my existing subscribers know that uh, I am going to be doing some of these PC builds and PC tips and tricks stuff alongside my sound design stuff on the same channel. I posted a little comment on my Facebook page, bearing in mind I've got 4,000 people on my Facebook page, asking if they would mind this, and everybody said no. Well, I didn't get any feedback at all really, so I'm going to be running these PC building vids alongside my sound design stuff. In a separate folder, I'll put all the PC stuff in one folder. If you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. If you want to unsubscribe because of this, feel free to do so. I will be carrying on my sound design stuff alongside this. But for now, um, we're going to flick over to this video. It is part one of a build that I did over a month ago now for an i7-7700K PC designed for music production and gaming. So yeah, hope you enjoy it. Cheers. Got a little bit of experience in um, making PCs myself. A few of them I do for um, requests. People that I know, I've made through for some clients as a little bit of a sideline. So yeah, I'm going to walk you through this project of me building a new desktop PC for myself. I'm going to today we're going to be going over the part list. I'm going to talk you through all the bits that I've used, reasons for choosing them. Yeah, and then I'm going to do a log of me building it step by step. I may just um, join them all together and do a. Not a time lapse, but a, a chopped up video of me making the build. I'll show you it when it's all done, see what you think. So yeah, let's get to it. So music production. Um, I've done a lot of research on Reddit and uh, other places like that to work out what is going to be the best for me. Um, as I said, I've built PCs before, but I've never built one for myself personally for music production. Most of them have been um, gaming machines for people that have asked me to build them. Predominantly ones that look nice, uh, very colour orientated. So yeah, um, after doing a bit of research on Reddit, um, you're not going to be surprised that it's going to be the i7-7700K. This is the flagship 4-core pr um, processor if you like at the minute. It's, uh, it, it's best for everything. It's the best core processor at the minute for gaming. If you see any... Um, videos on YouTube, people testing these out, um, it, it still beats everything else and down in single core application and for the four cores and eight threads that it's got. Um, yeah, um, I recently built a PC, this one here. This was originally going to be my new music production PC. Um, it's a, got a 6900K processor on it on the X99 platform. After doing some extensive research, it cost me a lot more than I wanted it to, and doing a lot of research, it is definitely overkill for what I need. As I say, should have designed it around the LGA 1151 socket and this processor to start with. So this one's currently up for sale at the minute. Um, it was built in the S in the um, NZXT240 Phantom. It's got some cool features in there. It's got some RGB elements. Um, it's got a Strix, that's a Strix 460. It's got a thermal take water cooling in it. A lot of high end stuff, but as I say, it ended up costing a lot more than I wanted it to. And after doing some um, thorough research, this turned out like it was going to be the better option for me. So starting again from scratch, it is going to be a white build. So yeah, the i7-7700K was the choice for me. Um, after that, obviously, then you need an... Uh, <coughs> motherboard that fits that so I've gone for the ASOS Prime Z270A the reason I've gone for this is um, I would always lean to ASOS if I can just for previous builds um, I've always got along with them really well they're rock solid made they've always got everything that you need the BIOS is excellent you've got the BIOS flash update uh, if you've ever built a PC before or have ever thought of doing it before Asus would have cropped up somewhere. So ASRock was another one that I was leaning to. Um, another Asus board that I honestly was 50-50 with was this one, which is the ROG Maximus 9 Hero. This is a lot more high-end. There's a, a hundred pounds, British pounds difference in these. The uh, Maximus 9 Hero being the dear of the two. Um, after reading through the specs of both of them, really... There is honestly not that much difference for the sort of sort of tasks that I'm going to be using it for. This one has a lot better um, connectivity and it works better for its internet connectivity or its um, what's the word I'm looking for networking capabilities. It has better audio 
functions but um because i'm doing music production myself obviously i've got an external sound card which is recording the sound from this as we go through xsplit i don't need any of the audio options that come with this motherboard um this has a lot better capabilities in regards to overclocking and stuff like that but honestly this running at clock speeds at 4.2 gigahertz with the gtx 1070 that i'm going to put in it is going to be perfect for me the little amount of gaming that i am going to be doing on it so Asus Prime Z270A. That was an easy choice for me. Um, what comes next? Um, the RAM. Again, an easy choice for me. I'll always go with Vengeance LPX if I can. Um, DDR4, obviously, which suits the motherboard. These are a 2x16 gigabyte kit, so 32 gigabytes in total, running at 3000 megahertz. Um, 32 gigabytes is gigabytes is ample for what i need for music production i know that because i've been running 32 gigabytes 32 gigabytes around in my old system i've never had a creak or anything like that that being said the motherboard i'm using has the capability to up it to 64 gigabytes in the future that's partly the reason why i chose the 2 by 16 sticks so that i then have two available slots if i wanted to upgrade it to 64 gigabytes in the future and um, the lpx also a low profile um the white is going to marrying with everything else on the build it is going to be a white build in case you didn't realize also I should quickly say about the z27a prime from asus it's predominantly a white on black board um yeah that's why i went for it as well as the fact that i, I trust the asus but asus as asus i trust the asus boards and uh, really like the bias the white theme is going to help carry through to everything else in the build the ram's white the board's white the graphics card's white. I've got some white LED fans, which we'll talk through in a minute. Um, for coolant, I've gone for an AIO cooler. I've gone for the NZXT Kraken X62. This is a 280 millimeter liquid cooler. Um, this, again, was an easy choice for me. This is the cooler of the moment. It looks absolutely fantastic. It does the job very, very well from reviews that I've read. I've never used this in a build myself. But um, hopefully there's enough room for me to put this in a push-pull configuration. Um, I'm going to have it on the front of the chassis with the stock fans pulling the air in to the case, passing it through the radiator. And then I'm going to use some Corsair SP140s, the static pressure fans, with the white LED uh, on the inside of the radiator, drawing the air into the case. So may not be able to fit these in i've heard some um compatibly compatibility problems with a 280 mil radiator in the case that i've chose which i should have said by now is the s340 elite from uh, nzxt i'm not going to lift it up because it's got some other stuff tacked on top of it maybe we can get it up quickly so the nzxt s234 e elite it's a very, very, very widely used and popular case. So here it is. This is the white on black version. Um, the one I've gone for is the all white. It's matte white. I don't think that bit is black there. I might be wrong. I haven't actually got it out of the case yet, so I can't tell you. But yeah, it's sort of um, a matte white effect. It's got some very cool cable routing options. The things what people have said when fitting a 280 mil radiator in here is it can interfere with the um, uh, front panel connectors that you got at the top here. But I'm quite sure if we put the right the um, fans on before the radiator, it eliminates any of that problem. And then with the sound card that I've chosen, there should still be plenty of room to then put the uh, fans on the inside to act as a push pull configuration. So yeah, the S they're the SP140 that I've got. Hopefully, going to put on the inside of the radiator to give me that push pull config. I've then got two AF120s by Corsair as well. These are the white LED version again. I'm going to swap these out for the two case fans. As you can see, the case fans are both just black. I wanted to stick with a the white theme. So one of these will be going on the top. One of these will be going on the back. Both white LED. Good thing about the uh, NZXT Kraken X62 is that it has a dedicated fan hub in it. Obviously, you only get two fans with the AIO, AIO cooler. So there's another two ports for me to plug this straight in, which means it's only going to take up one fan header on the motherboard, being the CPU fan header, which makes it very easy to control all of them with one single fan curve inside the ASUS BIOS. 
the Asus BIOS is very, very cool. When you use these SP fans, obviously they're PWM, which means you can change the speed of um, varying different factors, mainly being the temperature of the CPU, which is what I'm going, which I am going to want to do. What else have we got? Storage. Storage, I've gone for uh, a Samsung 960 Evo M.2. Again, this was an easy option for me because I've downgraded the CPU, downgraded the CPU from my previous attempt, which is sat here. The CPU, the 6900K was eight and a half hundred British pounds. The um, 7700K was 300 pounds. So I felt like I had a little bit of money to waver on a little bit better graphics card, which we'll talk about in a minute. And also the M.2 SSD drive. Saves a bit on cable management as well. Um, if you look at the picture from the NZXT, you do have these um, dedicated SSD sort of pods. There's one here and there's two on top there. I'm going to remove those so they don't stand out. The other hard drive, what we're going for, this is going to be installing the program and my plugins too. The plugin.dels or the plugin registries, if you like, will go on this. All of the plugin sample libraries are going to be going on this. It's a, just a one terabyte Western Digital Blue. Ample for what I need. I have a lot of s samples built into, um, excuse me, virtual instruments and effects like Contact, Reactor, and stuff like that. Got a huge array of stuff, and I checked the amount of storage that I'd already accumulated on my last drive on my last system, and it wasn't even half of a one terabyte drive. So this is going to be ample for me. Um, where I am at the minute, I don't see myself buying any more sample libraries. I've got enough to keep me going forever with complete alone plus the tones two stuff that i use on a regular basis so yeah that's the storage done 960 evo m.2 for obviously the os uh, installation of plugins and stuff and some games that's going to help the games load quicker as well and also the virtual instruments load quicker western digital one terabyte blue ample storage for that and plus my other sample libraries um that's it. The only other thing I haven't got here to show you is the sound card because it is, as we, as I've made this video today, it is out of stock. I'll quickly search for that while we're here. It's the Asus GTX 1070 Dual. This was an easy choice for me again because it's white. So this is the GTX 1070 Dual. Um, I did actually buy it from this BT shop place. Uh, it came through a lot less than that, and it was only a week ago when I bought it. It was £403.49, which is excellent. It's so much cheaper than anywhere else. Look, you can see it goes all the way up to £600. There's, with the mining going on with these sound cards lately, the price has just gone up crazily. But yeah, this is on order. They haven't told me exactly when it's going to be in yet, but it is going to fit into the build very very nice being white I may be mounting this ver uh, vertically yet I've not decided whether I'm going to do that I'll just stick to the traditional mounting option but yeah along with that I've ordered some cables from um, a British cable company called Shack Cables I believe it is they're just white cable extensions for the 24 pin power the 8 pin CPU power and the GPU power I believe there's some SATA ones in there as well, but I'm not too sure. The only other thing that I may add, if the lighting from the um, fans isn't enough or doesn't doesn't give it enough of the white glow that I want in lower lights, I may add an LED, white LED strip from NZXT. It uses the Hue control software, so you can sort of control it and uh, get it to sit well in your case. Yeah, that's it. Nice and straightforward part list. Every all the decisions were really straightforward for me. A little bit of umming or ahhing on the motherboard. The cooler, the AIO cooler was a no-brainer for me. Oh, power supplies. PSU. The only thing we haven't gone over. I've gone a bit overkill. I've gone for this EVGA Supernova 850G2. This is a fully modular. Um, I have worked with this before. Everything's labelled up. Excellent. The cables do not look too bad, even though I'm using the extension cables. Um, I really wanted an 80 plus gold just to deal with anything. Um, you, you always need to allow a little bit extra when you're doing music production PC because you're going to have a lot of stuff running through USB. I mean, I've got a MIDI keyboard. I've got an onboard outboard effects unit. I've got a Voris TI. I've got a sound card. Although they all have their own power supplies, 
They're uh, going to draw a little bit of extra juice through traffic. So yeah, that's it. I hope I haven't rambled on too long. Um, stay tuned. Part two is going to be the start of this build. Again, I'm still indecisive of how to do it. Whether to do loads of little videos just showcasing how to install the different bits. I don't really think I need to do that. I may just change the camera angle when I'm installing the different bits and just do a time lapse with one of my tracks on it to show you the build and then we'll talk about it when it's complete. Um, the aim of this channel is to keep building these PCs as a sideline. If you're happy with this PC or this spec or anything like that, you live in the UK, you want me to build one for you, just hit me up. I'm not gonna stick loads on for building it, believe me, I enjoy doing it. Um, I'll fully put windows on it for you, stress test it and everything. Yeah, get in touch. Um, you'll see when this finish it is gonna look good. That's mainly what people have beat PC, built PCs before in the past want them to look cool. So all the color coordination, the cable management, obviously picking the right parts to do the job well so yeah stay tuned for the next one and uh thanks for watching please hit that subscribe if you're the first person watching this obviously there's no subscribers but yeah thanks a lot for watching cheers